everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here, founder and CEO of eXp Realty and the host of the Expansion Podcast. And today, uh, I'm excited to speak to an icon real estate couple, Terry and Calvin, Calvin Gleaton, uh, a three-time, on my notes, two times, but just a three-time icon award-winning team uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, welcome, uh, Terry and Calvin. Thank you for having us, Glenn. Thank you for this platform. We're excited to be here. Yes, thank you. Well, awesome. So uh, I, I'm, I, I found out just a, just a minute ago, you know, when you got your license, Calvin, <laughs> which I'll mention in a moment. But one of the, fir the first question went put on here was, um, you know, you were a chemist uh, before getting into real estate full time. I'm not even sure that chemists should even count as a question. I mean, not, not giving you too much of a hard time, but just given that you got your license. What, what, you got your license, what, in 1982? Actually, actually yes. Uh, I actually, I think I passed the test in 82 and applied for the license in December. It may not have come until January, so it may, there's a little... Um, may so. technically have been 83. Yes. Right? Is yes. that what you're saying? Okay. That's correct. Okay, maybe eighty-three. Uh, but uh, you know, I was that was my junior year of high school, so I'm fifty-six. So I'm going okay. Whoa. whoa. Uh, so 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 you you've been you've been doing this thing. You've seen the business uh, from from a lot of uh, different perspectives. Um, yes. And then I I think uh, Terry, you you're a U.S. Navy veteran, so so thank you for your service. And uh, with a background in IT uh, before going full time, but maybe um, you know, uh, maybe you could just share. And I'm uh, Calvin. I'll just kind of um, touch on this. You've seen the industry change as much as probably most most agents have seen um, um, the industry change. What has been your kind of what, what have you seen in the industry from your perspective? Well, having um, of course a very stellar career career as a salesperson and then jumping into the franchise business um, just saw some dynamic changes where all the potential prof profitability went uh, to the brokers and really there was just really not a lot left on the table for the agents because of course after owning the six, six century 21 franchises and having roughly about 500 agents I just saw a, a, an across the board transition for, you know, that business and taught me a lot about franchising and, you know, the difference from the agency perspective. So, so you actually owned a franchise when it was profitable to own a franchise. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Back then. Yeah. Because, you know, back then back we were then. at 50% 50, 50 splits and that kind of thing. Uh, so it was a great business to be in back then. And then, of course, all the changes came about. Right, right. Uh, so I'm guessing there is no way uh, anyone could talk you into buying a franchise today. Oh, no. N no way whatsoever. Uh, and I, <laughs> if anybody is contemplating that, talk to me first, because <laughs> that is uh, definitely a recipe for disaster. Right, right. All the economics have basically <laughs> uh, went moved in favor of the agent, and 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 uh, so it's it's really tough to sort of own a own a franchise as it should, by the way, because the agents are doing the work. So, um, okay. uh, now Terry, uh, how did you get into to to real estate? Um, well, I was an investor first. I was uh, owned a, a few rental properties, and I was always on the hunt for a fix and flip. And I was finding all of my own properties. And uh, after purchasing one of my owner occupant homes, the new construction agent said, you know, you're a really nice girl. You know, you're a really nice girl. You should consider getting your license. You've done all the work. You found this property. And then you even brought in your agent who did nothing. You would do well in this industry. And I was in corporate America. I had two young kids and I just saw real estate as uh, the vessel to freedom. And so I just took a dive full time in and ran with it. And it's been 
absolutely phenomenal. Oh, ex excellent. So, um, so how did you guys, uh, you know, find, um, uh, uh, EXP, what was it that uh, got your attention? Well, as Calvin said, we had uh, the 6th Century 21s uh, previously, and he had not renewed that franchise agreement and had become an independent. And our primary focus was property management at the time. Our brokerage uh, was managing almost 800 doors, and we were doing very well. But what we discovered is we were not as competitive in the sales side and we were looking for something. We didn't know what we were looking for, but um, we were looking for it. And we had been approached uh, because of Calvin's success and tenure in the business. Uh, we had been approached by every franchise owner out there, uh, every big name and asking Calvin to come on board and start an office. And we really were contemplating one of them. <laughs> One of them we really were. Okay. And a friend of Calvin's uh, said, I heard of this company. I I've joined it and I want you guys to take a look at it. And she didn't do a lot of real estate, but she was a great friend. And we really sat down and listened. And it really looked like everything that EXP had to offer was what we were looking for for our agents at our brokerage and what we were personally looking for to be more competitive on the sales side. So we took a dive in 2017 and it has just been a phenomenal ride. So, so I'm curious, um, given the focus on property management, what, uh, what happened with that? Um, I, I know in some cases, um, we do, you know, uh, agents that do have property management businesses, they can actually own those separate from EXP. But did you keep that going? Did you sell it? Are you, is it oh, still no. operating? It is still operating. It is, it, it's the love of our life. It's our baby. We still have a staff and um, that's still a big part of who we are. Uh, our property management and Calvin's construction firm as well. So you can probably share a little bit about that. Yeah, one of the agents that uh, was a, had a military background, he had been with me through the century 21 years, and he was just sort of sort of taking a backseat. So when we connected with EXP, we hired him as a broker. And so he continued to run that company independently. Uh, so that gave us the time that we really needed to focus on the mission of, you know, building out our EXP platform and just sort of expanding in that arena. Uh, our love, well, of course, mainly fell in the, I would say, the realm of sales and people. Uh, so we had a, a, a great program through a high school where we got a lot of smart, uh, technically savvy kids. And they come in and they would just sort of work at the direction of that broker. And they turned out that they were really good at what they did. You could tell them they could reach the moon and there were no limitations. Whereas if you have adults, it's a little bit different. <laughs> so, right, right. Uh, so that company, uh, like Terry said, one time it, it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the largest in Georgia uh, outside of Renters Warehouse. So, uh, but of course, over the last three, four years, uh, a lot of the owners sold. So oh, that yeah. contributed uh, greatly to our ability to list and sell properties and have inventory. And that's where we benefited on the icon side with EXP uh, because, of course, you know, managing a big uh, portfolio like that gives you sort of a built in customer base. So that's. Um, you know, been, I would say, the foundation to a lot of the success and our ability to really take advantage of the ICON program and just sort of find a new home. Right. So if for a, um, and this is more just because of your experience in, in, in property management, would you, if you were counseling an agent today, uh, that's looking at expanding their business or scaling, they've had success in sales. Would you 
encourage them potentially to start a property management business or would you would you say that's maybe more 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 work than it's worth in the early stages especially oh i would say that's that's a, a mountain to climb and i would not if you have any level of success in sales uh i'm i'm thinking that's not a path that you want to follow uh, I would recommend partnering with somebody who's already in that space and because there are a couple of ways that you can create partnerships through referrals and that kind of thing. And, and that's the way I would approach that business today, because this is a very cumbersome uh, set of circumstances to manage if you're trying to sell because it, it requires so much time. And that's why I got away from it. Uh, it's great to own that type of uh, company, but as it relates to the day to day, it, it is a lot of work, a lot of attention to detail. And number one, and with my newfound success at EXP, I did not want to divert, you know, diverge my time into that arena. So I just said, well, I'm out of here. And, uh, that's why I hired somebody to do that. And, you know, having that many doors, you know, it, you know, it how, how many doors did you, did, did, did you have over there? Was that 800? At one time, we were close to 800. It was phenomenal. Okay. So, and, so which would you rather, which would you rather, rather have 800 agents in your retro organization or 800 <laughs> doors? <laughs> I would rather have 80 agents in my retro <laughs> I'll pay you know, I'll take the 800, but 80 would be good. <laughs> 80 quarter, 80's quarter, a good trade-off. Okay. There, there you go. go. There you go. Any day. Any day of okay. the week. So no doubt about that. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Yep. And uh, so um, so then I think we touched a little bit on, you know, your lead, lead generation. Some of it's kind of built in with the property management business. Um, but uh, what what's are you doing other other lead generation strategies or is that pretty much it? Um, we we do a lot of lead generation outside of what comes to us. More than half of our business is referral based because of the property management. And you know, with Calvin being forty years in the business, everybody knows knows us. I remember when the kids were younger, we would go places, and one day my son says, "Are you all famous?" <laughs> Everybody, because Calvin used to be on billboards, on, on commercials. Um, but we have since the market has shifted and we no longer primarily focus on property management. We realized, OK, EXP has some really cool tools with this KV Core. So we're doing a lot of uh, lead generation online, but we also are sticking to the old school because everybody knows Calvin. So we do the postcards still. We do the newsletters. Uh, we we just kind of stay in, you know, in our sphere's face, so to say. And of okay. course, being being in the business a hundred plus years, <laughs> you're always getting a lot of repeat business, uh, and that's you know. For those agents who stick around in the business, they probably can attest to that. Um, I, just, I think this year alone, I did business with 10 repeat clients. So that that's a, a better way to do business because, you know, people are constantly calling you. So if you can right. stick around, it's great. Yeah, and they, they know, like, and trust you. You already have a, a rapport with them. It's... Uh... You're comfortable with each other. There's there's trust that was built the last transaction. I mean, it's it makes makes total sense. Um, and uh, I keep on. By the way, I keep on going back to this phrase that the team put in there about you being a chemist. I'm just imagining, um, you know, a a picture of you as a mad chemist slash realtor. Well, you know, it, it's, it's it is interesting um, because. It, the way this sort of transition was, my initial goal was to go to medical school, and that's why I majored in chemistry. But my dad actually died my first year in college. And after that, one of the things he made me promise was on his deathbed was that I would buy my mom a house. And I had no clue of how I was going to buy the house. So I'm looking for a vehicle. So when I started to work for Eastman Kodak, 
uh, back in the day, I just looked for a vehicle that would allow me to just sort of interface on a part-time basis. And as I was buying my first house, I made connected two dots and I looked across the table. The lady who showed me four houses was collecting a check for like $7,000. And I'm saying, well, whoa, wait a minute, this may be a ticket. So I looked a little farther and the next month I was in real estate school and <laughs> in a couple of months I was licensed. So that's where I found passion. And, you know, the old saying, if you find passion somewhere, you'll never work a day in your life. So, you know, having working for that company and having this great benefits package, I had sort of the best of both worlds because I was really sort of killing it in real estate was what everybody was telling me because I was doing working part-time make doing for four or five closings a month, sometimes up to 10 closings a month. So really uh, I just had the best of both worlds. So I just found true passion though in real estate and forgot about everything else. Okay. So you were, you were making uh, uh, two, three, four times your income and your part-time job as you yeah, were that is correct. in your full-time that is. career. That is correct. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, um, you know, if, if you had one piece of advice that you give to an agent who wants to be successful in their career, what, what would that be? We would probably tell those agents to get really intentional about their network and where they're spending their time, because we believe of what you focus on, what you farm, what you nurture is what you will harvest. So it's really important that once you get into this space of being an entrepreneur to run your business like a business and get around like minded people that are wanting and or doing the same thing that will pour into you. Awesome. No, great, great advice. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, your your network depend determines your net worth. So True. You know, it, it's uh, both both the quantity and the quality of people, and and how you how you work with those relationships ultimately uh, creates all of the opportunities that exist in our business. So that's uh, that's awesome. So hey, uh, Terry Calvin, um, thank you so much for um for being on the podcast it's been fun um you can find yes. the gleetons on instagram at the, the wealthy, wealthy group underscore what's that yes the wealthy group that's our ref share team okay awesome and uh and and uh so anyway um a lot of really some interesting takes and as uh as Calvin pointed out, because he, he knows, uh, don't buy a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and don't take money from a franchise. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't take. Oh, yeah, because because all they're doing is recycling your own money. They're like, hey, I just gave you 50000 But you did pay 50000 for a franchise fee. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not, I'm really not getting anything for it. So anyway, yeah. uh, all, all good. Uh, but with that, th thanks everyone for for, uh, for for listening in and watching, and uh, thanks again, uh, Terry and Calvin. All right, thank you, and have an awesome weekend.